Astrology is uh, a science. It is, in fact, a, the mother of all science. During the old days, the clay tablets of the Sumerians were uh, stolen by what you call the scientists of those days to uh, mathematically predict the exact time of an eclipse. In doing so, they start to challenge gods and this cosmic design through mathematics. Astrology has been with every single disappeared civilization since forever, including the pyramids uh, in Egypt were built uh, using astrological facts. That's why each one of those pyramids is facing a very specific constellation. Then it also goes in our time. If you, look, if you go to Las Vegas and you're gonna go through uh, the dam, on the right side, just before you hit the mountain, you have an astrological chart, which obviously depicts that those who have designed the dam wanted to make sure this dam was strong and secure, it will last forever, use astrological information. People like JP Morgan, extraordinarily wealthy people, wrote that, you know, millionaires don't use astrology, billionaires do. So it is far from being a pseudo-science. When you have centuries and upon centuries of human evolutions, you have people that are curious. They look at the constellations and then logically they realize there is a season, there is time. There is a spring, there is a summer, there is the autumn, and there is a winter. And they notice that people born during specific time of the year would have the the power that is involving that specific time of the year uh, for example people born in august we are talking about obama president clinton we're talking about madonna michael jackson uh, schwarzenegger these are people born in august which means god is offering the power of the summer to get to the stage and to shine like the sun, because Leo is ruled and controlled by the sun. During the day, every planet shines away, only the sun shines. Meaning, if you're born in August, you are set by God to experience the limelight, fame, fortune, power. Now, if you're born like me in February or in January during the winter, there is no fruits on the trees. It's cold and it's wet. So you, you're talking about a moment when nature is sleeping. That means you have to work much harder to uh, reach to the summit, so to speak. But because the part of God in each one of us is much stronger than those stars, you can apply your will and use those stars. So sooner or later, regardless of what sign you were born under, you will get to your goals, especially if you understand your cosmic divinity, because if you're not happy, it's because you don't live your destiny. When it comes to indoctrination, will it be scientific and, and turning yourself into an atheist and only believe in science or only believe in religion? You're not doing yourself a favor. You're not helping your own case. Understanding your cosmic divinity is opening the door to reaching every one of your wishes. The only thing that I'm having a problem for people to realize is that the stars are so much more than dead rock hanging out there for the sake of beauty. There is so much power in those stars. And people think, but they are so far away. How can it affect us? Wait a minute here. There is no time in space. Every one of these stars has an inner life, an inner power that is imposed upon your birth. When you reincarnate on this dense physical world, you inherited what you call a UCI or a unique celestial identity that reflects your, your divinity. In other words, it is the tools that God gave you through this universal creation that will allow you 
to find yourself, to understand what it means to be human and to service humanity to the best of the best of your ability, such as in my case, because I believe I'm gifted, thanks God, by a good set of stars. UCI stands for Unique Celestial Identity. No human being is born the same because no human being is born the same place with the same stars at the same time. The universe is in constant motions. By building cosmic consciousness, what you're doing now is getting such grasp to who you are that allows you also to understand who your mom, your dad, your brother, your friend, or your wife, your girlfriend is all about. And that will allow you to be more, more understanding. And that's the beauty of astrology. Again, I repeat myself, it is so important. God created the stars in the heavens for more than the sake of beauty. He gave them to us for interpretation so that we may lead a safer, more productive life. It is crucial to understand that there is no difference between your mind my mind, the one of Einstein, or a killer. It is exactly the same wiring, the same weight, the same density, the same function. What is different? The UCI, or the set of stars that you inherited because of the particular time of the year you reincarnate on this dense physical world. Every one of those stars can be both positive or negative. It's like the sun, remember? Without the sun, there is no love, there is no light, there is no health, okay? At the same time, Leo or the sun rules love and light. If you love somebody too much, you are now going to burn the object of love by becoming jealous and possessive. So you have to understand both the good and the bad of each one of these planets and each one of those signs. The 12 signs of the zodiac represent the 12 hours of the day, the 12 um, month of the year, the 12 sins, the 12 jury, the 12 tribe of Israel, the 12 notes of music. And it is nothing else than Jesus' initial cosmology, ministry. When Jesus wanted to introduce us, human to our father in the heavens what he had in mind is to make us understand the essence of the 12 apostles which are nothing else than the 12 signs of the zodiac and i go further you have the oriental astrology and you have the occidental astrology back in asia they used the tiger i am a tiger they used the dog the pig the horse the cat 12 animals and here the oriental and the oxygen astrology is the same it's also based upon those 12 signs or those 12 specific energy again reflecting the essence of the 12 apostle or the cosmic teaching of jesus but politically oriented church of the old days didn't want to give you this wisdom that's why they stack it under the 175 mile of secret library under the vatican not only this, you're going to see pictures of the Pope being enthroned under the sign of Leo, the king of the Zodiac. Wherever you have Leo in your chart, God is giving you the opportunity to shine, to own stage. Because uh, in the old days, only the clergy or those who had the money and the education were allowed to to gather such an incredible, critical type of information. And they're not going to give it to you because knowledge is power. Ignorance is evil. In doing so, they can control you. The idea is to understand yourself. And to do that, you have to go into the cosmic card where God resides. And then from there, you have to investigate this cosmic rhythm. And then you have to go under those stars to see how you stand. And that's where you will understand your cosmic divinity and play and work in respect of those cosmic rules. Now, because nobody taught you those universal laws, that will not emancipate you from paying a heavy penalty. Like I always say to my students, I am the first cosmic god, okay? If you 
do not see the other side of my hand, it doesn't mean it does not exist, right? And what has been accepted as solid discipline and reality may not be. Okay? What I'm trying to tell you here is it's important to be curious and to realize that you have a celestial identity. And the more you investigate your celestial gifts, the more power to you. It doesn't matter if you're a Jewish, a Christian, a Muslim, black, white, yellow, or green for that matter. Astrology, unify. Because you have a sun sign, you have a moon sign, you have a rising, you have a dragon. Contrary to religion, 875 different denominations are there to pick from. That separates astrology unified. And that brings me to explain to you the age of Pisces and the age of Aquarius. It takes about 2,000 years for the human race to experience one specific zodiacal sign. Last 2,000 years, the world was into the jurisdiction of a planet to call Neptune. Deception, religion, drugs, alcohol, confusion on the negative aspect of Neptune. Now, Neptune on the positive side, remember positive, negative, up and down, black and white. On the positive side, Neptune rules imagination, creativity, music, acting, dancing. So last 2000 years, we were under the jurisdiction of Neptune. And that's why all those religions pop up left and right all over the world. Then in 1945, the scientific community developed the first atomic bomb. In 1945, that's where the age of Aquarius kick in. Now Aquarius regulate anything and everything to do with the sudden release of energy, nukes, space travel, UFO, astrology, new age, humanitarianism, freedom, the internet. And this energy has helped humanity to grow tremendously in the last 50 years, so fast, compared to the last 2,000 years under a nebulous, elusive, deceiving, religious planet. You're talking about the age of Aquarius. You're talking about anything and everything that what we're doing today. Cosmic awareness, extraterrestrials, discovery. We are talking about technology that is mind-boggling which is ahead of us. And the age of Aquarius is making this world much smaller. Aquarius rules technology. Let me give you a little hint here. I was born in February with a stellium, which means a lot of planets in Aquarius. My sun sign is Pisces. Einstein, Michelangelo, George Washington, including myself, we're Pisces. We're swimming upstream towards God's feet into the universe. Okay. As an Aquarius, my soul's purpose is represented by a man who has a jar and the water is pouring out of the jar onto the world. My soul's purpose, again, is, as I said earlier, go into the cosmic code, translate those incredible, magnificent cosmic energy, put it in the jar, and the water that is pouring out of the jar is me. That's what the age of Aquarius is all about, bringing us together, astrology unified, and you could be any race, you will still bleed red. And that's something you can never forget. We are all on this planet for a very specific purpose. That's what the age of Aquarius is all about, to make you aware of the incredible, of the impossible. Some people ask me why I am so interested into the stars. That's because I was born with the energy of the stars. I was born under the constellation of Aquarius and the Pisces sun sign. You cannot teach Michael Jackson to sing and dance. You cannot teach Madonna to sing and dance. You cannot teach a proficient writer to write novels, beautiful books. You cannot teach Michael and Jill, Mozart or Beethoven to play symphonies. The gift is nothing else than the set of stars that make you 
totally different than me. And that includes my interest, my gift, my sins and virtues. It's all written in light. Since I can't remember, I always knew that I was not normal. I always knew it. I'm not normal. I'm interested in things that uh, other people are not. And, and I have a curse. I will not remember anyone's face. I will not remember anyone's telephone number. I am very poor at taking directions. I have absolutely no memory. But I will never ever forget the date of birth of everybody that I met in my life. I will never get lost into the universe. I will get lost in a small area, but not in the universe. That, that's, how, that's the way I'm designed. It's my gift. As a child, I always knew that not only I was different, but I was taught to ask questions. And then I landed on the book, and that book literally changes my life. It's, it's a book that was uh, written, that was an astrological book that started to spark my curiosity. And uh, of course, having the moon in Gemini, I'm very curious. So I start to ask questions, I start to observe, I start to uh, realize. And then over the years, I, I developed my own celestial identity to, uh, to the top, literally, as far as reading people and as far as making predictions. Because again, um, there are no accidents. There are only cosmic circumstances at play that again, our science, scientific community and majority of people do not know just yet. But again, the age of Aquarius is, is changing all that. You know, when I was a kid, I was terrible in mathematics. I mean, I couldn't stand mathematics. And to this day, my mind is not geared to dwell with detail, but my mind is more objective. I was, uh, my teacher used to say, Louis, you are really good in what we call in French dissertation writing. I was, he was saying, he was reading my own work in front of the class. And I was, wow, I must be good then. I didn't know that I had a gift in communication and in writing. And then as far as English is concerned, you know, I, I never took an English course in my life and I never learned how to type. Meantime, I write every day. I write books, 600 page books. I'm speaking all over the place. I speak a few languages. It's a gift and everyone of the people that are watching me right now. I wish I could help them to explore their divinity because I could point them out to a gift that is sleeping. They don't even know they have it. Sometimes the gift is obvious. You know, I play piano, I play guitar, I like to sing, I write songs. This is obvious gifts. There are a lot of people that are very confused. They do not know. And astrology is designed to, to do just that. You know, astrology is pretty much like um, the wine of the year. <laughs> it has the color, it has the test of that specific moment of the year. And then you have the seasons. And those constellations are, are there and designed by God himself so that you can lead a safer and more productive life. That's why God gave us the stars. Not for NASA to send a little robot of, or one, you know, trying to make you believe one day you're going to live on Mars. There's more to it. You know, humans are so much more than blood, flesh, and bones. We are human spirit. We are loaded with power and with gift, not only through the cosmic code, but through the superconscious in time and space. There is so much, so much that we have inherited from our, our stellar conception. And, and if you dig into it, it will open your eyes and it will open a door to a brand new, brand new road that will bring about all your wishes. Astrology was used only in the old days by those who have the education. That's the clergy, the church. But most of the information was coming from gifted people like me, which sudden enough we end up on the stake or hang all around because uh, it was against God. They didn't want that wisdom to be, you know, pushed out to the masses. And then some people realized that there is a very, very strong financial aspect to astrology. So, there goes your horoscope newspaper. 
Okay, that's modern astrology. That's where it started, where it finished in the horoscope newspaper. What I'm teaching is Nostradamus, 16th century divine astrology. And again, the great prophet 500 years ago didn't have a watch or a computer. That's why dedicating with the rising detail, trying six dial degrees, all that is not part of my teaching. I guide people in understanding each sign of the zodiac is positive and negative aspect. Each planet that control each sign of the zodiac and each planet, good or bad, in each sign of the zodiac and each dragon's head and tail in each sign of the zodiac. It takes about six, seven hours a day if you really push it and a full week. And then what you get at the end is one of, of my psychiatric psychiatrist students saying, Dr. Turing, I have learned more in your week-long crash course in Sedona than seven years in my accredited college. But again, you know, you cannot be either normal, religious, or have a low, uh, unevolved UCI. If you're not curious or if you're not smart, uh, you're not going to get into the tremendous, wonderful values and power of divine astrology. You have to be either curious, you have to be normal or above. You cannot be below. Now, they do not, they do not know uh, the mother of all science or so divine astrology. Uh, this, this methodology is very intuitive, very symbolic, easy to digest. All you do is listen and then you build a reflex after a time. It comes naturally. All my students tell me, oh, that moment way down. Whoa, yes, yes. This is happening all the time in my classes. It makes me feel absolutely wonderful when I do a, a reading. Of course, I, I don't tell people what they want to hear. And people are not stupid. They know. They can detect if you're real or not. When I start to talk about their health, when I start to talk about what happened to them, what's ahead of them, where they're good and where they're bad. When I point out very specific area of their body, they have health, and they, they kind of look at you like, how does he know? It's all written in light. Anybody, anyone watching me today can do as good as me or my student. It's just a matter of education. Astrology is not a religion. It's not something you believe. It's a science. In other words, you got to put the energy. You got to put the time to investigate and react to it. It's a wonderful feeling to know that I am able to guide a person to what God has intended this person to be. Uh, you've got to be cautious uh, with horoscope newspaper. And some people relate to their horoscope. They say, oh, wow, they said this and it happened to me. What happened is that uh, the horoscope has stimulated the superconscious in time and space. You know, the future is nothing else than the reincarnation of your thought. And as I said earlier, we are much more than blood, bone, and flesh. We have a lot of inner power that comes from the superconscious in time and space. But that's another show. What I'm trying to tell you is sometimes the horoscope stimulates those forces and your horoscope becomes a reality. But it could also be negative. When you come to me, you actually trust me with your spirit. A physician without knowledge of astrology has no right to call himself a physician. That is from the father of modern medicine. So when you have somebody which happens to be the true father of medicine saying to you, you cannot call yourself a doctor if you do not study astrology. That tells you that there is something pretty incredible in the science itself. I'm going to use another quote. This one is from Nikola Tesla. You, you probably heard of Nikola Tesla. Uh -huh. He says, my brain is only a receiver. In the universe, there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secret of this core, but I know that it exists. That is Nikola Tesla. And what I did myself is uncover this core. But how can I say that and remain humble? To the eyes of people who may think because I'm so confident and I'm so real and I'm so honest, I have a, a, an ego problem. I'm to state the facts. 
You know, sometimes I feel the amount of cosmic wisdom that I have can be a blessing when I use it to help people, to guide people. You know, but I am like the shoemaker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I make shoes, but I'm the worst. I wear the worst shoe on the planet because I know so much that I consider sometimes to be a curse for my own self to know that much. You know, it's a blessing because I'm able to guide people accurately and to make predictions that are undeniable. I even brought the FBI twice on my house, okay? But at the same time, it's a curse because the majority of people can't relate to me or don't believe it. I do predictions of earthquakes and God knows, my gosh, they are totally undeniable because they are documented, they are published, and they are dated on TV, on radio, my books, my newsletters, whatever. Once I predict the 9-11, a year before I give all the details of what would happen on that day, and you can Google it, the Dr. Terry 911 famous prediction, you can see what I wrote. And at the very end, in my book, in block letter, I wrote, watch the power of the planet, the sun release of energy of Uranus, and the government will make drastic decision. That is all block to tell you how much I knew. And a year later, it happened. I looked at, the, at my charts and I thought, oh, there is a very serious potential for terrorist attack in my own country. So I sat on my computer, I went to the French FBI and I warned them, I said, you know what, on that day, um, you're going to have a terrorist attack. And then uh, a week later, you're gonna have a terrorist attack in New York. Next thing I know, two FBI agents knock at my door and they go, how do you know there were going to be an attack in Paris? Uh, so I look at my chart, you know, I don't predict anything actually. I just look at the stars and the stars are more than dead rock. They're telling me things and I translate it the best way I can. They look at everywhere in my house. They look at my uh, statues. They look at my uh, green cards. They look, make sure that I was not a sleeping cell because they thought I was part of the terrorist group to know the exact thing. And that was it. Then I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> in New York, I brought another couple of FBI who knocked my house who did the same thing. They were wondering, so I showed them. I said, look, I have a software. I design a software, okay? A software that allows me to realize that those stars have hidden knowledge, hidden power, and I'm gifted in translating it and giving specific dates for terrorist attack, earthquakes, or God knows what. They looked at it. And uh, they were very perplexed. They were young. They were like, I don't know, 40, 45 years old kids. Uh, to me, they are kids. I'm over 70 years old. So they've been, they've been educated so traditionally, so scientifically, that they did not realize the tremendous amount of information that was available to them through my work. You know, I do have police officers, oh, I got so many police officers feedback on my website. I have a police chief of New York and his son, uh, he's a retired police captain in New York. He is following me closely. He's one of my students and he's like me, he's desperate trying to bring it to the police because the software is here, the education I can provide it to the cops. And then when they stop somebody, they, they have their date of birth. They just type the date of birth and you tell them right away if they are dealing with a platonic deadly soul who will not hesitate to kill them. That what makes the difference between a, a positive, productive human being, law obedient citizen, and a killer, because they are out there. Don't be fooled, they are out there. And they are ready to kill you because that's what they need to do in order to survive. You know, horoscopes is based upon imagination. There is a big financial aspect to astrology. There is, uh, it's commercialized. It's in newspaper, magazine. It's all about a place. But it has nothing to offer but imagination. However, human being needs to regenerate. They need to know. So there are days 
when you wish you had no getting up, you're going to have a bad cold, you are going to um, have a flat tire, you're going to get a ticket from a cop, you're going to, you're going to ruin your car. They are such a day. I call them negative cosmic biorhythm. And there are other days where everything you touch turns gold. It all depends on how your UCI or how your stars are affecting the stars of that day. If they are in harmonious aspect, they talk to each other progressively, positively, harmoniously, you're going to have a fantastic day. But if they are in opposition or in square, or you are under one of your negative cosmic biorhythm, you're playing Russian roulette with your life on that day. There are people who decide to jump out of the plane. Oh, parachute don't open, and they crash and die. The people who go in, uh, in a cruise, when they feel like they use the human calendar, they don't know nothing about the moon calendar. Oh, they decide to take a cruise when they feel like. The next thing you know, what was supposed to be the most exciting, wonderful, beautiful holiday experience happens to be a nightmare, and they come back sick. Humans haven't been trained to understand the rules of the cosmic codes and work in harmony with the celestial body. This wisdom has been lost. It's been uh, manipulated, and cast aside, ridiculed in the name of science and religion. And in the process, Humanity is paying the ultimate price for challenging God's cosmic design and for thinking they know better than God himself. There goes your scientist, the atheist. I personally believe that using the stars is like flying a plane. I mean, would you dare Trying to fly an airplane if you don't know anything about the aeronautical maps, the technology involved in the plane, the plane itself, the regulation of the FAA. Would you dare? If you manage to take this plane out of the ground, what's going to happen? You're going to die. That's what I'm trying to say. Humans are like that beautiful shuttle, that beautiful airplane. They can fly safely and so high. They can dominate everything, but they haven't been trained. They don't know the rules. I took the example of an airplane, but it goes for anything else. Education, education is the key. In reference of the stars, every single human being is constantly bombarded by those cosmic winds coming from the stars. To give you an example, during a full moon, you know that the emergency services are going completely out of order. You also heard our subconscious response to our closest satellite, the moon. The words lunatic, moody, and crabby. The moon cycle is 28 and a half days, which is the same cycle than woman menstruation. So you're talking about the moon being responsible for your emotions. Now you have 12 signs of the zodiac. Okay, 12 different moon signs. You have the moon in Aries, you're gonna be competitive, you're gonna be impatient, you're gonna be aggressive on the negative aspect. On the positive aspect, you're gonna be very competitive and become a leader of the mind. You have the moon in Taurus, dignified, perfect. That's the domestic area of the human experience. Taurus is the bull, is security. So that moon is dignified, it's one of the best position for domesticity, cooking, family, security, real estate, Moon in Taurus. You have the moon in Gemini, it goes Dr. Turing. You're going to be an ADHD. And as I said to my student, being ADD or ADHD is not a disorder, it's a gift. Einstein was ADD. Gemini is the opposite of Sagittarius. Gemini is critical thinking. Sagittarius or Jupiter is the codification of thought. That's the books, that's the Bible. There goes Gemini challenging the system, challenging by questioning. Now, if you have the moon in Scorpio, good luck to you. Now, you have the emotional response of life uh, in killing, literally, your domestic scenery. Elizabeth Taylor was born with the moon in Scorpio. How many husbands, hypothetically speaking, she killed? Seven or eight? 
So if you have the moon in Scorpio, you're, you're going to nurture tremendous negative resentment, revenge, destruction. You're not going to be able to understand why you want to kill everybody or you want to kill yourself. I was born with uh, Saturn, which is called in Greek mythology, the great malefic. Uh, I was born with this planet in the sign of Virgo. Virgo is the elimination principle. It's cleansing, cleaning your intestines, your bowels. So having this nasty planet in the sign of Virgo led me to contract cancer. If you have Saturn in Aries in the head, okay, you're going to have problems with your eyes, your nose, your teeth, or you're going to have a... Uh, you may develop brain cancer. Again, there, again, there are ways to avoid that. Okay, on the medical aspect of Nostradamus divine astrology, I teach what to do and not to do. If you have Saturn, the great malefic in Taurus, remember Aries the head, Pisces the feet. Okay, Taurus is the neck. Then you might have problems with your thyroid gland or develop thyroid cancer. And then in third position is Gemini, your lungs, your arms, your fingers, motion. Okay, if you have Saturn in, in Gemini, the air intake is going to be very, very small and you're going to collect bacteria on top of your lungs that can give you all sorts of allergies and problems uh, and cancer, if not coronavirus for that matter. That's why some people will die of this disease and others won't. Then if you have Saturn in Leo, you're prone to serious heart attack or heart problems. If you have it in the stomach, that's where the problem is going to be. If you have it in Scorpio, uh, we're talking about the planet of, of reproduction, the sexual organs, prostate cancer, and all the way down to Pisces, your feet. That is, that's why the father of medicine told us that if you do not study astrology, you cannot call yourself a doctor. Then I have a lot of people say to me, well, Dr. Terry, you're not a real doctor. They're trying to hurt my integrity. But wait a minute here. You know, doctors are killing like two or three hundred thousand people every year because of medicine and medication. I don't prescribe medication, so I never killed anybody, just the opposite. And those people have to realize there's a big difference between education, intelligence, and the gifts. Uh, but they're just rational, they're logical, they are unevolved souls, and I understand them. And it's very hard for me sometimes not to be negative with them and go down to their level. But this is how it is. This is, this is life. Mercury is the tiniest planet in our solar system. Three times a year, this planet is going to go backwards, retrograde, of course. It's an optical illusion. Mercury is still going forward. But because of the ecliptic, it happens to look like if it's going retrograde. Now, what happened during those days? Uh, anything to do with transportation, communication, anything to do with uh, chain reaction accident and weather is going completely out of order. But most of all, mercury also affects the GPS of animals, including whales, dolphins, who think the open ocean is that way when they actually beach themselves because their GPS, natural GPS, is malfunction. This, this problem. So, when Mercury goes direct, things go back normal. But this is an opportunity given to you by God. Think of a train. That train is going this way all the time. It's going fast. We have no time. We're working. We're busy. We have to do all sorts of things. A lot of responsibility. We have no time to listen to Dr. Cherry, for example. Then God says, oh, wait, 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 wait. slow down, slow down the train. And now, put it in reverse. So what you're doing by going backwards, you are now helping the people who have missed the boat or missed the train to jump in and catch up with us. That's the purpose of Mercury Retrograde. It makes people much more receptive to metaphysics, to spirituality. It brings affairs and people of the past, people you haven't heard forever. Oh my gosh, I didn't hear about you for 15 years. Where were you? Mercury Retrograde. Then Mercury rules every moving part mechanic engineering. It rules uh, your wheels. It rules uh, everything that moves. And it's like somebody is putting a stick in it. <laughs> you, the universe doesn't want you to go forward. It wants you to go backwards and then realize what you've missed. That's the purpose of Mercury Retrograde. The fact of the matter is nothing is motionless. The universe is constantly moving. We are talking about our own solar system here. 
You know, the scientists are discovering new planets every day. They have to entertain you, okay? Yet, they know nothing of, their, of our local solar system and the tremendous spiritual values that incorporate those stars, which are so much more than dead rocks hanging out there for the sake of beauty. So our scientists have a lot of retrospection to do and re-evaluation to do. But if their UCI is too healthy, too much Capricorn, too much Virgo, too much healthy Taurus, uh, their mental faculties are going to be set to delegate the physical manifesto only. Those people, we need them to build bridge that stand, gearbox that works, you know. Uh, they have to delegate the physical manifesto to make us uh, sure that it works. But you got different guys like me, which are much more uh, geared by uh, our stars to delegate into the future, into the cosmic code, into UFOs and into the superconscious in time and space. We're all different. That's the beauty of being humans. We're completely and entirely different. You're related to your family genetically 150%. You may look like your mom and your dad or your kids. However, you're, they're going to be the biggest strangers in your life because your mother, your sister, your dad, your mom, never going to think, behave, create, or have the same fate as you because they don't have the same UCI. They were not born at the same time that you, they did not heritate the same constellation, the same sign, the same cosmic energy as you. So they are totally stranger to you. You're connected genetically 150%, but when it comes to the world of the spirit, your, your cosmic leniency, your cosmic identity, your cosmic DNA is totally different. And unless you investigate the stars, you never know who you really are and your potential. I, how can I answer such a question and remain, again, <laughs> modest? All I get is people that I haven't seen for many months or many years. Dr. Cherie, remember, you told me this, you told me that, and it happened. So I can only go from what the people have told me. But as far as me being wrong, uh, we could try it out. We could try it out to make a prediction, right? Okay. President Trump has absolutely no chance whatsoever to be reelected unless, like they did in 2016, the Russian mingle with our election system. Now, this is a very, very sensitive uh, discussion involving coronavirus. The future is nothing else than the reincarnation of the thought. Humans have a lot of power. They are so much more than blood, bonds, and nerves. It is critical to understand. We have elected a president that is a Gemini. Gemini is all about talking, radio, communication, magazine. It's all over confusion. Gemini is all duality. Duality means the right, the left, the Democrat, the Republican. This country has never been so split. Okay, this is due to the president stars. When you elect a president, you are going to be forced to experience his fate, his idiosyncrasies, his stars, his UCI. Okay, it's like a father. Let's say I'm the father of, a, of my family. I have six kids and I have a beautiful wife, but I'm a Mormon or a Scientologist or a witness of Jehovah. I'm the president. I'm the top. So everybody's going to be what I want them to be. This is what's going on with President Trump. He was born with the tail of the dragon in the sign of Sagittarius. Sagittarius was anything and everything to dwell with the law, religion, College, universities, foreigners, the minority, black people, the Indians. Or what's going on right now? Sagittarius rules foreigners, foreign lands. And since this president has been in power, he only had a wish. His wish was to build a wall. Big, tall, magnificent wall. Guess what? 
it doesn't have to be a wall anymore because the war is here. It's called coronavirus. His wish was to literally put the United States of America into a box. And America is now in a box, completely against the rules of God's design. America, I remember, is a cancer country with a head in Leo, supposed to run the world like every other president did. But nobody is there to guide our president. Our president is like you and me. He's a human being. He has a heart. He has feelings. He's a father. He's a family. He has a family. Okay? But he's under the jurisdiction of the stars. And, and it's a disgrace, not only for our president, but every politician on the planet and every president on the planet not to be cast be conscious. In the future, we are not going to elect a president because... He's, uh, he's got money, a land on money, or he's a famous actor or a famous singer or run a TV show. No. In the future, people are going to be cosmic enough, like I am, okay? And they're going to elect president to have the right stars so that they can promote their country. We're not there yet, but it's on the way. It's, it's going to get there in time. It's part of my mission. But it's crucial to understand that people are very emotional. You're talking about a president. They're supposed to endorse and promote and love their president. That's a given, and they should. But they must understand that my work has nothing to do with politics. Don't kill the messengers, please. I am here to make you aware of your president's stars and why we have been cursed because of his stars, pretty much like the German people who have elected Hitler. They were not cosmic conscious. They did not know that Hitler was born with the tail of the dragon in Capricorn. Capricorn was politics. Because of politics, he went to jail, yet he still managed to stick on his tail, be in charge of Germany and drive the white German people to kill millions of people all over the world. And we paid such a heavy price for this lack of cosmic consciousness. Between logic and emotions, emotions will always override logic. Don't kill the messengers again, okay? I understand you, the depth of your emotions, okay? But try to understand where I'm coming from and benefit. And you can go to any of my newsletters and you can read the entire higher charge of President Trump because everything that happened since he's in power, four years, the day before he got in power, I did his stars and I explained everything that is today right here in our faces. And that's the beauty of being cosmic conscious. And that's where my curse is. Now, this is, this is where um, you're going to be testing Dr. Cherry. This is where you're going to realize the true power of Nostradamus Divine Astrology. Because what I'm going to say, I have to be very cautious. But at the same time, I feel responsible to let you know. Once the tail of the dragon move out of Sagittarius, uh, sometime in 2021, anything to do with foreigners, foreign lands, anything to do with the virus, anything to do with the stars of the year, which are very negative, the stars that are the same, our president dragon still cursing foreigners, foreign land, and foreign affair, uh, putting America in that box. That's gonna go in time. But the next dragon is going to be a completely different dragon. This dragon's gonna be a scorpionic dragon. I mean, you're talking about the most powerful, the most destructive, the rebirthing energy of Scorpio. Now, Scorpio, remember, was the police force. And this dragon is void, of course, which means it's already in action. And that's why you have the entire, my prediction of the police being restructured is taking place right now. And that's going to put, that's going to give a full, a complete restructure to all the secret service, the police. Uh, Scorpio was also a large corporation, which are going to go belly up. Secret, a wake up call, like extraterrestrial will be, won't be done and deniable, it won't be there, put it this way. You're talking about a supreme wake-up call coming to us. Um, the tail of the dragon is going to be in the fifth house of love, romance, and creativity of the United States. And that affects children or young adults. 
So it could be a natural disaster. It could be a war. Remember, Russia is a Scorpio country, so they can be about to do some nasty things. Uh, Putin, I already know, will die of a heart attack, and so will Kim Jong Un. I already know that it's in their stars. That's why I, I made that prediction a while ago. So be ready with the tail of the dragon in Scorpio for a complete rebirth of the United States. The good news is the head of the dragon in Taurus. Taurus was the bank. Taurus was money, solidity, and security. So the complete revamp that I see financially, we put America where it belongs, where it has always been. Once the negative stars are moving away, those that are imposed by the celestial universal current and by our president uh, negative stars. And you will see when it comes uh, a year, year and a half, two years from now, the dramatic impact. If you think death and drama is something that's going to go away and it's over, it's not. It's just the beginning. So just be prepared. And uh, remember, regardless of what the stars say, there is a higher order, a karmic work that has been imposed upon the United States, upon every one of us, including all politicians. And no one can control or try to change God's will because it's written in light in the stars. Just, just be prepared for a rebirth, for a wake-up call, for very dramatic news, but at the same time for a beautiful rebirth of the United States of America. Anyone interested in Nostradamus Divine Astrology has to start with the book called And God Created the Stars. That's the basic, the dynamics of Divine Astrology. The second book should be The Power of the Dragon. The last book is for those who have graduated. It's called I Know All About You. Uh, you know, if you go to a public place, for example, and you've got a, a business deal to do, you cannot ask this person, okay, uh, what is your birthday and what time were you born? And where were you born? Like modern astrology request. All you need to know is the month of birth. Imagine that. Once they have, um, those three books, they can finalize with uh, my best seller, which is uh, Beyond the Secret, which involve, of course, all the deep secrets coming from the depth of the superconscious in time and space. As far as writing books, I don't know, I must have wrote about 300 books. I write every day. <laughs> I mean, those that are published, uh, are crystallized on Amazon, they are pretty much everywhere on my website. Get them anywhere. <laughs> Good question. Nostradamus was born in December. And Nostradamus was born with the head of the dragon in Pisces. Now, Nostradamus, Edgar Cayce, Madame Blavatsky have something in common. They were top prophet, top healer of the human history. And what they have in common? The three of them have the head of the dragon in Pisces. What does Pisces rules? The superconscious. That's why Edgar Cayce the sleeping prophet, was going in time and space through his sleeping state, delegating the superconscious and being able to X-ray you, telling you where you got a problem. Nostradamus was doing this, um, but he was using quatrain, the same type of quatrain that I use. I'm the only living astrophile who uses Nostradamus methodology. I write quatrain, but I don't have to fear the French Inquisition cut my neck off and did not be a mistake. So I added very obvious keywords. So like today, it's all about NASA, cosmic news, UFOs, sudden release of energy, earthquakes, the future of humanity, the age of Aquarius. We are into that energy right now. And this energy rules television. Remember, millionaires don't use astrology. Billionaires do. JP Morgan knew better. Would you dare to completely ignore the red sign in the street or the stop sign in the street? Yes, if you want to die, you're going to ignore the laws that were written by men. And as I said earlier, because nobody taught you the laws of the cosmic code, doesn't mean those laws do not exist, and that does not emancipate you from paying a heavy penalty. What you do not see, 
doesn't mean it doesn't exist. That's why you need to be curious. That's why you need to go above. You need to go into the cosmic codes and then go under. So you see how you stand. Understand your UCI. Understand your cosmic design, your cosmic divinity, and what God has in store for you as far as your faith is concerned. Nowadays, in this very disturbing dramatic times people have lost their jobs their career is gone their children cannot go back to school everything is nightmarish literally it's a disaster for humanity these are cosmic winds that are so heavy for us and this is why this type of cosmic information are revealed vitalizing your spirit. They're giving you an idea to who you are. They're giving you the grounding you need to face the hell we are going through. And this is why the universe is stopping everybody. Because remember a few months ago, everybody was walking down, looking at their cell phone. They forget what it means to hack. They forget what it is to communicate. Not gonna have a mask, distance. Safety. What is the message behind all this? The message is a IO order has been passed to stop everything and start to re-evaluate all that you have accepted as reality. It may be digging to the spirit because you got time now. You can waste your time on Facebook or watching stupid videos or you could show intelligence and start to delegate the divine. And if you ask, you shall receive. And it's only when the student is ready that the real teacher will appear. And that's where I'm coming from. You know, there are schools right now that teach how to kill. There are scientists working all the time to kill us in mass, to develop poison, to develop Anything and everything that kills, to manipulate the weather, weaponize the weather, create viruses. Where are my schools of love and light? That's what I'm doing right now. And that helps the people watching this movie to regenerate, to realize that there is a divine purpose that is imposed upon their destiny, which starts right now. Re-evaluate all that you have accepted as reality. Challenge yourself to the extreme. Go back to God cosmic design where it resides. Understand your divinity and use the gift that was given to you. Because if you're not happy, it's because you don't live your destiny. As simple as that. Humans are the essence. Humans are the powder. Humans are the energy of all those stars above your head. What's above is below. Because you haven't been educated in the understanding of your connection with those rocks. Doesn't mean those rocks have no life in them. And that's why you have to challenge yourself. In bypassing what your five rational, logical human sense dictate and start to visualize and see life through your third eye, through your intuition, through the cosmic design. Doing so, we'll open the door to the miraculous power that you were born with that will lead you to your dearest wishes. <laughs>